CT pulmonary angiography, effect of the thrombus load on right ventricular function in acute pulmonary thromboembolism. I am Dr. Swastika Lamture from CGS Medical College in KM Hospital, Mumbai. Aim of our study was to evaluate the role of CT pulmonary angiography in diagnosis and prognosis of patient in cases with pulmonary thromboembolism. The other aim was also to correlate the thrombus load which was done using modified Miller score with right ventricular dilatation which was measured as right ventricle to the left ventricular diameter ratio. So pulmonary thromboembolism is a significant cause of cardiovascular morbidity and it ranks only third after myocardial infarction and stroke. Studies have shown the incidence of pulmonary thromboembolism to be 53 to 162 per 1 lakh population. And the most common clinical presentation is acute onset dyspnea and the other symptoms are cough, chest pain. The most common cause of death in these patients is right ventricular dysfunction and hypotension. Thus, right uh, ventricular pressure changes uh, is a significant prognostic factor. So, as you can see, uh, this is a brief chart showing the pathophysiology of the uh, pulmonary thromboembolism. So, after the thrombus is uh, dislodged in the pulmonary artery, the, there is an increase in pulmonary arterial pressure thus increase in the right ventricular afterload. Now this has two effects. One is it will increase the right ventricular stress which increases the oxygen demand and because of this oxygen demand there is uh, increased right ventricular ischemia. This ischemia causes right ventricular dysfunction and because of the increased afterload that directly itself causes right ventricular dis uh, dysfunction as well as dilatation. So now this again it causes a decreased right ventricular output, then a displacement of the interventricular septum and thus there is decrease in the left ventricular preload. This causes decreased cardiac output, thus decreased systemic and coronary uh, perfusion which causes further dyspnea and this whole cycle becomes a very vicious cycle leading to further ventricular dysfunction. So the gold standard for uh, diagnosis of pulmonary thromboembolism is catheter angiography. However, CTPA, that is CT pulmonary angiography, has become the investigation of choice due to its following advantages. One, there is direct visualization of the thrombus. Second, it causes, it can determine the thrombus load. And third, it can assess the right ventricular strain. Now, this thrombus load can be assessed by uh, one either a modified Miller score or Kennedy index or Valve score. Now there are few direct signs and few indirect signs of pulmonary thromboembolism on CTPA. So as you can see in this chart, there are few direct signs wherein one there is complete occlusion of the artery and thus there is non-opacification of that vessel on, on uh, angiography. Secondly, there can be a centrally uh, filling, centrally dislodged thrombus which causes a filling defect centrally. However, there is a peripheral contrast opacification which is known as polament size or a uh, polament sign or a tram track sign as you can see in the uh, image below. <laughs> And the third way is a peripheral thrombus which, which forms an acute angle with the wall of the vessel. The indirect signs of pulmonary thromboembolism are mosaic attenuation, pulmonary infarcts, linear or band-like atelectasis, pleural effusion and dilatation of the main pulmonary artery. <laughs> Uh, apart from the diagnosis of the uh, pulmonary thromboembolism, we can also assess the uh, right ventricular function. Uh, the signs are uh, right ventricular dilatation. So as you can see in this first image, the ratio of the right ventricular uh, diameter to the left ventricular diameter is more than 1. Normally, this ratio is less than 0.9. Secondly, there is flattening or bulging of the interventricular septum on the left side. As you can see in this image, there is a bulging of the septum on the left side. Thirdly, there is reflux of the contrast in, into the uh, IVC that is inferior vena cava and into the hepatic veins. So in our study, which was a non-interventional cross-sectional observational study, 
uh, it which was done over a period of 18 months. It was done in the Department of Radio Diagnosis and the sample size was 130. This was calculated by approximately a uh, number of patients that is 6 to 7 patients per month. So since the study was done over a period of 18 months, the total comes to 126 which we, we have rounded off to 130. The inclusion criteria was any patient undergoing CTPA with pulmonary thromboembolism who was willing to participate in the study, give a written, uh, give a written informed consent and the age was 18 or more than 18. The patient excluded from the study was who were not willing to participate, then whose serum creatinine was uh, elevated, who have had a history of contrast allergy in the past, um, who have undergone uh, contrast studies, uh, iodinated contrast studies intravenously or intraarterially in the past 22, uh, 24 hours and pregnant females. <laughs> So the procedure was done using a Toshiba 160 slice computer, uh, CT unit. Uh, the field of view was from the thoracic inlet up to the inferior exterior, uh, ex, uh, extent of the diaphragm. The parameters were uh, set such that the FOV was 500 mm, the thickness was 2 mm, the increment was 1 mm, uh, the lung filter was used and the window was uh, 40 to 400. Now after a plain scan, uh, 80 ml of uh, intravenous iodinated contrast was pushed at an infusion rate of 4 ml per second followed by 20 ml of normal saline at an infusion rate of 4 ml per second. Now post uh, image after the uh, acquisition of the image, uh, the modified Muller score was used in our study for assessment of thrombus load. Now as you can see, it was calculated uh, by giving a score of 0 or 1. So 0 is given when there is no thrombus and 1 is given when there is either a partial human occluding thrombus or a complete human occluding thrombus. Now this score was calculated using uh, occlusion of the segmental arteries. So the maximum score was uh, maximum score is 16 because 9 on the right and 7 on the left and the minimum score is 0 wherein there is no thrombus. <laughs> Uh, and then later on, the right ventricle and the left ventricular ratio was calculated uh, using the minor axis of the right ventricle and the left ventricle chamber in the axial plane. And the widest points were measured from the interventricular septum to the uh, inner surface of the ventricle. Now, as you can see, uh, out of the 130 patients that were enrolled in the study, the mean age was 53. And 55% of the patients were male. <laughs> Uh, according to this chart, as you can see, the most commonly involved vessel is the right main pulmonary artery. And in 6% of the patients, all segmental branches were used. That is, it was saddle thrombus involving all 16 segmental arteries. Uh, this shows uh, the correlation between the total thrombus load and the right ventricular function. Now, the total thrombus load was calculated using modified Muller score and the right ventricular function was uh, assessed using the right ventricle to the left ventricular uh, ratio, diameter ratio. And as you can see, the p-value is less than 0.001, which is significant. So, there is a, a strong correlation between the thrombus load and the right ventricular function. So, Stein et al. in his uh, studies had concluded that although the clinical suspicion might be low, CTPA has, uh, is a useful modality to rule out pulmonary thromboembolism when the diagnosis is uncertain. Using CTPA, we, we diagnose acute pulmonary thromboembolism as well as the right ventricular function can be assessed using the dimensions of the right ventricle. Wong et al. in his study it had also used modified uh, Miller score and uh, had correlated it with the right ventricular dysfunction and there also he found a strong correlation between the two which was consistent with our studies. Uh, in a, another study conducted by Atesha et al, he used a different parameter that is the thrombus load was calculated using the Kennedy index and there again there was a strong correlation between the thrombus load and the right ventricular dysfunction. Thus he concluded that the right ventricle is an independent, uh, right ventricular strain is an independent parameter for the prognosis of the pulmonary thromboembolism. In our study, the limitations were that uh, this measurements were done, done by a single radiologist. So the inter-observer variability was not taken into the consideration. Uh, and the protocols that we used was right ventricle and the left ventricular time meters. However, the better uh, parameters are the ventricular volumes, which was used in Kong et al. However, due to uh, commonly practiced model, uh, modalities and uh, daily use, we have used right ventricular and the left ventricular diameters. 
So in conclusion, I would like to say that CTPA not only is a diagnostic modality in case of pulmonary thromboembolism, but it can be used for prognosis of this patient as the thrombus loss load in itself is an independent prognostic factor. Thank you.